Imagine a world where you didn't have any precious metals. Perhaps you don't and you're looking to buy some for the first time. What would this blank canvas end up looking like for you? Well, we're going to do a thought experiment today with a £5,000 budget and a £500 budget. We're going to see what they both look like and I'm going to share my own insights on what I would do if I was in the situation with a blank canvas and either of those budgets. So let's dive in and have a look at what we would buy right now to make this a little bit more shiny than it currently is. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble. We have a blank canvas today and we're going to fill it with a whole bunch of beautiful shiny things in a £5,000 budget and a £500 budget. We're going to see what they look like compared with each other, both in silver and gold, and a combination of them. And also share some of my insights, if I was new right now, what perhaps I would be airing on the side of, whether it be gold, silver, a mix, etc. So lots of insights to share. As I would always say to you all, I'm not here giving financial advice. I am just a guy who likes to talk about shiny things. It's important to make your own decisions up, and that's kind of the point of this video, to get you think about the different options, and maybe you make that decision that's right for you. Also, bear in mind, if you're in America, I'm British, if you can't tell from the thick British accent, so I have a bias towards things like Britannias. We do have some eagles here, and I'll be talking a little bit about those, but for example, gold coins, I have nothing wrong with eagles and buffaloes that you can replace with Britannias. Just because I'm going to talk about Britannias doesn't mean that you have to get them. The point here is that there's an array of different coins and options and different styles of precious metals out there, and often it can just be a simple case of an ounce of silver is an ounce of silver, an ounce of gold is an ounce of gold, it doesn't matter what it is, just choose what you like and you can be done with it. That's, I think, the message here. So, without further ado, let's dive in and get some shiny things on the table. First, I thought I'd do a quite interesting visualisation of the gold-silver ratio. So right now, this is a £5,000 budget two of these in the UK, spot price around £20, you'd probably pay about £24, £25 an ounce of silver with taxes basically. So that is five grand, 200 ounces of silver. Five grand in gold, one, you ready? Two, three, and a quarter. There's a distinct difference there, isn't there, in the uh, volume and the size, uh, I think, as well. Well, volume and size, same thing. I meant volume and weight. So uh, volume of 200 ounces here. Uh, this is as compact as 200 ounces is going to get you as well with two beautiful, big, chunky bars. Um, if you had 200 ounces of you know, coin tubes, it would take up even more um, size. If you had 200 ounces in things like coins in capsules, they would take up even more size. And sometimes that's a factor to bear in mind, you know, if you've got to hide this stuff, if you don't want to have it in a safe, which is, I mean, safes are great, but they're not great if someone breaks in and says, open the, fa uh, open the safe, um, you know, you open the safe, basically. So, you know, there's a distinct difference here in size and volume and weight, and it, I think, is, if you're going to go one way or the other, I would say going gold is probably more practical, generally. You could just pick up all of this gold, write that, that, in your pocket, off you go, you've got five grand in your pocket for an emergency. These, yes, you can pick them up and go, but they're not light, they will slow you down, so to speak, if that's something that's important. So do bear that in mind. But I thought that was an interesting visualisation to get us started. So, in terms of um, gold versus silver, I think if I had £5,000 right now, I would probably buy... Um, a little bit of both, I think I would, I honestly would, if I had nothing right now. Now, if, you know, I have the beauty of hindsight because I have a lot of gold and silver in my life already, if I had my current stack, which I do, I wouldn't necessarily do what I'm demonstrating. But for me, you've got five grand's worth of gold here. I would think that you don't necessarily need to have three big chunky ounces of gold, but I do still think that having one ounce worth of gold in that stack, in that big long term, this one would be the one that you'd sell last if you needed that cash out. You know, this is the big foundation of that £5,000 stack. So that would be sort of £1,600 right there, done. The next thing I think I would buy would be a large chunk of silver for um, my, my stack, my supposed new stack of £5,000. Now, um, why I would necessarily not go towards coin form silver right now is because the premiums are pretty high on coins. There's nothing substantially wrong with paying a little bit more of a premium for coins than a silver bar, but if you're in the UK and you're buying you know, things like eagles, like this stack of eagles here from a dealer, you're going to be paying £35-£40 an ounce for them. 
And when I tell you that we can get silver bars on the second-hand market here in the UK, for kilo bars like this, for £700, that's £21, £22 an ounce. That's dirt cheap. And that is how I would do it. I would get the cheapest kilo bar of silver I think I could possibly get, possibly 500 gram bars as well, um, and that's what I would do. Coins are going to have a higher premium on them, no doubt. But I also do think that having something that's not a kilo in weight is also a good thing. So I probably would also end up getting a tube of coins, whether those be Britannias or Eagles or Maples or whichever ones take my fancy. Quite honestly though, it would be whichever ones I could get for the cheapest price because there's fundamentally, unless you're really going to be in it for collecting, um, there's no fundamental difference whatsoever in having an eagle versus a Britannia uh, or versus a two ounce coin like this lion here. We'll stick this in for good measure as maybe that's your one little collector coin. You've got some foundation coins and you've got one other little piece that you like. So here we've got uh, 700 pounds, let's call it, and then we've got um, what, 20 times 20, let's call it 10, 20 times 25, 28 maybe. Yeah, so that's about another 560. So here we've got about three grand, three and a bit grand. So we've still got nearly £2,000 more to spend. Now I would personally then, this is just me from my own kind of, I guess, experience. I would say that's enough silver for me. I would then go and I would buy some sovereigns. So call it two grand. That's probably five sovereigns worth. There we go. Five. Can't count. Five sovereigns. So that... Bearing in mind premiums vary from different objects to different objects, that's probably a good estimate of what you can look to achieve with a £5,000 budget. So from that perspective, I think that looks like a really healthy um, healthy mix of both gold and silver. We're sitting around about the 60% to 40% silver to gold ratio there. Uh, I, the reason I do that is because I would be concerned more about liquidity than I would be about maximizing potential profit on things like silver. £5,000 is no small amount of money to spend, especially if you have none at all. And the idea here is if you want to get into it, but perhaps it's not for you, perhaps situations change and you need to get out of it, then at least this is fairly liquid in the form of a really liquid set of gold coins, a very cheap uh, silver bar, and then of course your popular government coins, which you can probably get out of at half a decent price compared to what you paid for them. Now, I'm doing the maths in my head based on that you're getting all of this at really good prices. It might vary, and if you go to somewhere like the Royal Mint, you'll end up spending a thousand pounds on this. You'll probably end up spending, I don't know, an extra, call it an extra five hundred pounds. Maybe not, maybe not five hundred. Maybe an extra three hundred pounds across there. So you're probably ending up paying good sort of two sovereigns maybe if you buy from dealers um, straight off the bat with the VAT, the taxes on that. Now for those that are not affected by that, then that I think is a pretty healthy, respectable stack. And it gives you that foundation, that gives you that security, it gives you that flexibility, and it gives you that long-term hold. The next thing you would look to do is rebalance how you feel the markets are with the gold and silver ratios and all of the market influences that's happening out there in the world. And the next time you buy, perhaps the next year's budget of £5,000 would be a little bit more silver. But bear in mind again, if next year's budget ends up being another five grand's worth of silver, you can see where I'm going with this, can't you? After four years, five years doing that, you're going to start running out of space. You're also going to start running out of carrying capacity. If you go back to those beautiful video game um, sort of parodies where you run out of inventory space, you will. And it has happened to me numerous times in the past. So perhaps you might want to think about getting more gold. So that's the £5,000 budget. Let's talk about the £500 budget. Now, £500 worth in just gold is going to be a sovereign, which is about £400 give or take 10, 15, 20 pounds, depending on premium, and two one gram gold bars. Now, depending on where you buy those gold bars, you might be paying more than 500 because some of the gold bars will be 65, 70, 80 pounds. If you're buying small little handmade stuff like mine, it'll be more expensive. If you can somehow find a dealer that's willing to part with some gold one gram bars at two, three, four percent over spot price, then that is your 500 pound budget. It's quite different, isn't it, to the... Um, well, here we go, if we get the three ounces back out, it's quite different to three ounces and a sovereign of that for £5,000 worth. So, is it worth even buying gold on that budget? Because, of course, if you stick all your money into a sovereign, you've got 
one sovereign, 400 pounds, and then what you got a budget of another 100, so that's going to be four ounces of silver at 25 pounds an ounce. Is that, is that going to be worth it, is the question, I guess. Now, one could argue here we've got a higher proportion of uh, ratio from gold to silver in terms of the stack there. We've got four parts gold, one part silver. Um, I would argue perhaps if you are just going to do a mix like that, that you might want to consider taking away the sovereign, maybe replace it with something like a tenth ounce gold. I've got my own little tenth ounce gold bar here again, but a tenth ounce of gold right now will probably set you back around 180 to 200 pounds, depending on what you're getting, where you're getting it from, etc. So we'll call it 200 pounds for ease of maths with shipping and everything. So then you've got 300 pounds worth of budget left. And that then gives you seven and eight. That gives you eight more ounces at 25 pounds an ounce. Now, of course, if you're in the US and you're getting silver at less price than that, then good for you. You can have a bit more silver on the stack there. But that makes more sense to me anyway for a £500 budget than it does with the Sovereign in the middle. Now, the Sovereign is a fantastic piece. It's a wonderful piece of history, but they're not cheap right now. £400 is pretty much the cheapest that you can get a Sovereign for, and that's quite a significant amount of money that you would lock up in one little item, and you should never put all of your eggs into one basket at all. So from my perspective, I do feel like this is a better ratio for the gold to silver. Um, we're heavy, slightly more heavy on the silver side than we are in this version of the stack over here. So it is, I think, worth thinking about if you are on that smaller budget. Gold is not unobtainium though, and it is not impossible to get. Um, whilst sovereigns are fairly expensive and you know a single sovereign is going to be 400 pounds you could replace the 10th ounce gold bar with a half sovereign half sovereigns often have really quite decent premiums over spots they have um, you know flexibility they are beautiful and they have history to them so in my, I don't have a half sovereign here I don't think uh, in my box no I don't have a half but you can imagine this half the size um, and then the silver around it that I think is pretty cool also you can get smaller uh, bits of gold. Again, you could like just have you know a, a one to five, one to four ratio of gold to silver, or you could just ignore the gold. And a lot of people might think that because they go, well, what's the point in having one gram's worth of gold? Um, I would tend to agree in certain respects, but also I think it's important to remember that gold is the better thing to have. It is the better metal. It's going to prove in its long run to be better. But the problem at the lower end of the budget is that if you're not buying the cheapest bits of gold that you can at that fractional end, you're probably wasting more money on the premiums than you are gaining out of the gold itself. So you might want to think about silver. Now, 500 pounds doesn't really get you a big bar of silver. So a kilo silver, you know, spot price 600-ish, you know, you're going to pay 700 for it if you buy it from a second-hand market, probably 900 if you buy it from a dealer. So do you go for one single big lump of silver, so a 10-ounce coin there, that's going to be probably about 250 quid, 250 pounds for those in America, sorry, I'm so British, I can't help myself. So then um, that gives you 10 other ounces worth of silver, so around about 20 total. Uh, so what we got there, we got five... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So all in silver, if I had just a £500 budget, I think I would split it between having one big item and then lots of other smaller items. And the reason that I would split it is because, again, it's about having this flexibility. If I needed just £25 because, I need, I don't know, some things come up and I need to have the cash, then you just sell one of your coins, you're fine. If you had just a big bar of silver, you have to sell the whole thing to get your cash out. If you had the majority in a sovereign, you're selling a quarter. If, you know, if your whole £500 budget was this again, then you are selling one quarter of your silver to pay that small tiny bill. Or you buy, you pay for that bill with you know, a sovereign and you've got all this extra cash left over. It doesn't make sense. The point here is that you want to avoid selling your gold and silver if at all possible. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that one day you won't sell them because I think it's important to remember that um, the reason you buy gold and silver in the first place is to make money down the line. Some people will have, you know, opinions that you don't ever sell gold and silver. It's there to protect you in the aftermath of a global collapse. But here's my question, right? Both of these piles of gold and silver look fantastic. They look great, absolutely amazing. But is this pile of silver gonna be enough to live off if the dollar collapses? 
probably for a little bit. How long could you live on five hundred? Sorry, five thousand pounds or five thousand dollars right now? You know, how many months worth of groceries, gas, car, petrol, insurance, all of these things? How much is that going to get you for five thousand pounds? The argument there is probably not a lot at all. Is this stuff going to protect the money that you have, that £5,000 through time? Yes, it is. So if you had the 5000 in cash under your mattress, that will get you a lot less in the future than this stuff will. It will track the overall value of money. It doesn't happen immediately. So if you hear all these bits of news about inflation going up and gold and silver not following, it will happen in time. And you've only got to look at this last 18-month period to understand that. Inflation has been rampant at 10, 11, 12, 13 percent and this last couple of months we've seen gold and silver go up by around that. So it has caught up. It doesn't happen immediately but it does happen. So again the question 500 pounds worth of silver and gold is that really going to make a difference? Probably not going to make a difference but what I think it will do is it will instill some really healthy saving ideas for people. It will make you think more about money. It will get you interested in various different aspects of money. And I think that's invaluable. I can't say how important I think that that is for people to take notice of. Um, to save money as well, super important. And if it's in a different form of cash, then so good and so be it. That is the best thing that you could probably do with money right now. That said, it's not worth going all in on. You should not look at these two piles of silver and go, well, $5,000 isn't enough, but maybe $50,000 is. Um, yeah, sure, it might well be, but you know that's a lot to put in. And if the fear mongers and the silver pumpers that I call them out there uh, ultimately are wrong, silver doesn't go to the prices that perhaps you want it to, then what are you going to do with 50 grand's worth of silver and gold? A lot of people will then have to hold it for a very long time, and that money could be used for other things, better things, more important things like mortgage payments or bills or rent and things like that. So that's a topic for another time. I've already rambled on for nearly 17 minutes, I've only just realised. it's Time has flown by, hasn't it? It goes by so fast when you're having fun playing with shiny things. I guess that's the last little sort of parting thought to think about as well. Um, gold and silver are great. They can be very addictive. I've talked about that in the past before. You get this £5,000 budget out the way if you're buying it all in one go or if that's your £5,000 budget for the year. Um, you just look at it and you think, that's not enough. I need more. Just be careful on that side of things. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy more, but just be careful on it. And if you're on a smaller budget, then perhaps these are some things to aspire to. Anyway, I would love to know what you all think about today's video. And if you have differing opinions to myself, then bring it on. I would love to hear what you've got to say down below. Would you stack differently to me? Would you put different ratios of gold and silver into these uh, into these two different size stacks? Would you have larger bits of gold, smaller bits of gold, larger bits of silver, hang on, larger bits of silver, super large bits of silver? Or smaller bits of silver. It'd be great to hear from you. And thank you to my BYB ramblers listening to minute 18. I haven't gone 18 minutes in a while. This one has been a proper old ramble. But you are cool if you are listening. And I do appreciate you sticking around. And it'd be great to hear from anyone down there in the comment section if you are still here. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you one and all for watching. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.